Hey everybody, it's Christine of Crafty Paws. Wanted to share with you guys the card that I made with my latest free digi, which is which I've renamed Thanksgiving Boost because I figured this little Rottweiler was giving the little Chihuahua a boost to take a look and see what's on the kitchen counter, as well as boost meaning you know the slang term for stealing, uh, which is what they're hoping to be able to do with that little turkey on. Anyway. I have posted on my blog all the Copic colors and the materials that I used on this card, but I thought I would share with you guys real quick just the process of making a hinged card, which this is my first, but it's super easy. Look how cute that is. The whole card is shaped like a little bone or a big bone. And what I did was I used this awesome, awesome, I'm so excited to have this diamond die. It's a dog bone that's large enough to make a mini album out of, but I decided I was going to use it to make this hinged card. So let me show you real quick how to do a hinged card. Uh, one eight and a half and eleven uh, by eleven sheet of cardstock, and all you do is kind of mark about an inch off of one side. This is a little bit less than an inch because this dog bone is so large, right? I just want to make sure it probably could have worked with an inch as well, but this will be plenty. And all you do is line it up, top of the die, just a teeny bit of both sides of the uh, end of the bone, overhang a little bit over that folded edge, and you'll need to take your die cutting platform. This is a magnetized one. Lay down your cutting plate lay this down and because I don't want it shifting at all I'm going to put a little bit of washi tape up here and then my last cutting plate and run it through my machine. I'll be So this is the piece, the one that had the fold in it, the little extra piece up there and then I cut one other one and I'm just going to take a little bit of glue it along the top there and lay this piece right over top. With wet glue you have a little bit of wiggle room in case you need to adjust kind of how everything fits together. What I and then that's it. That's the whole card base and you can cut out multiples of this and then fussy cut a little bit smaller so you get a nice border like I did with this card. But it's a super cute card, right? And some people don't like to have this little extra edge. You can see that um, showing. So they'll cut another bone out and put it on the inside. On white, I don't think it's very visible, but if that bothers you, obviously just cut another little bone out and fill in the inside as well. Um, so that's my little explanation of a hinge card. I hope that helps folks give this a try. It's really easy. And with this die, too, too cute. I'm going to put a link in the description box below to Diamond Dies. And if you make a purchase at Diamond Dies, please remember to use the code THANKSCHRISTINA to get 10% off your entire purchase. And free shipping worldwide if your order is $35 or more. I'm also going to put a link in the description box to my blog post where you can download this digi for free. And let me just really quickly just go through and explain how I assembled the card. I cut out blue basil cardstock and then I cut out a little scrap piece of um, blue stripe pattern paper and I fussy cut around that, that to, to make it a little bit smaller, but it was really easy to do. It's a really simple shape. Um, and then I ink the edges of both of those layers with Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Antique Photo. And I did that partly because I'm not a great straight cutter or curved cutter. So I wanted that to kind of finish off the distressed <laughs> look of that base. Then I took another layer. I wanted to add a, a few layers just to add some interest. So I took some craft cardstock and used my Martha Stewart Punch Around the Page. This is the Eyelet Lace punch set. And I punched around 
a frame, kind of a frame, and then I cut it in two pieces actually because I just wanted the top and the bottom to be offset a little bit um, and put some, give some visual weight to the this main focal area that, and frame it out. So I did that with some craft cardstock, and I like how that came out. It's a little bit askew, and I did that intentionally. Then I took some white cardstock and framed around this main center part, used a little bit of pattern paper to create like a wallpaper effect in the kitchen, and then used another scrap of um, pattern paper. This one is a recollections pad. Um, and I don't recommend this pad. I think it's called Brights and Basics, and it's super thin paper, but it was before I knew any better not to buy a paper that way <laughs> that was that lightweight, but it's great for, you know, making scenes and things like that. So I use that for the wallpaper, and then this is just a teeny scrap that I had. It's um, little dots on some red-brown kind of paper. And that's from the American Crafts Nightfall collection. I just had a little scrap left over, so I thought that would be give an impression of kind of like wood floorboards for the floor. And I like how that came out. Then, like I said, all the Copic colors that I used are listed on my blog. I did fussy cut this out and this the two dogs out and separated them so that I could layer the dogs kind of overlapping over the counter a little bit to bring in the image because I think it was hanging out a little bit off this way. And I wanted to make it a little tighter so that you got a better impression of the dog bone base. And I like how that came out. I added some Wink of Stella to the platter. I added some glossy accents to the countertop and the eyes and the nose of the dogs. Um, these really cute uh, wood dots, they're by Teresa Collins, just for some added you know, interest and dimension and kind of continuing on with that kind of craft wood feeling. And I think it makes a cute card for a man or a woman. So if you're looking for kind of a masculine card, this could be a good one for you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.